Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. There's a ton of confusion and even some misinformation out there about antibody tests, so I thought I'd set the record straight. I'll give you the scoop on what happens when you're infected with COVID-19, how your immune system reacts, and what's the deal with all these antibody tests? Should you be running out to get one? I'll answer those questions and more starting now. First things first, let's talk about what happens if you're infected with COVID-19. Well, first, you have to be exposed to someone who has COVID-19. Generally, that person will either cough or sneeze and expel respiratory droplets that then have to make contact with your mucous membranes, your mouth, your nose, your eyes. Sometimes, they'll land on your hand and then you'll make contact with your face. Then, one of those viral particles will attach itself to one of your cells. It will then make its way inside the cell and actually start making copies of itself using your own cellular machinery, much like a Xerox machine. Those infected particles will start spreading throughout your body, mostly through the upper and lower airways. That's where COVID-19 seems to thrive. That's when your immune system kicks into high gear and starts kicking that virus's butt. However, at the same time, your immune system starts making antibodies. That's a protein substance which actually gives you lasting immunity against the virus. Let's take chickenpox as an example. If you get to get the virus that causes chickenpox, your body fights it off, clears it, and then it creates these antibodies which serve as a lasting immunity. Generally speaking, chickenpox is an illness that you get only once in your life because of these antibodies. Now let's move on and talk about the testing for these antibodies. Generally, there are two types of tests, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative tests simply give us a yes or no answer, whether there's a presence of antibodies at all. For example, if you've ever had a strep swab or a nasal flu swab, those are qualitative tests, positive or negative only. Quantitative tests give us a numerical value which establishes how many antibodies are existing in our blood. These are generally higher end tests that we actually have to send out to a lab through a blood sample. Let's summarize what we know now. You get an infection with COVID-19, your immune system kicks its butt, clears it, creates a lasting immunity through a protein substance known as an antibody. We can test for this antibody. So shouldn't we give this test to as many people as possible so we can send them out into the workforce because they're protected? Not so fast. There's actually three problems with these antibody tests I'm about to let you know about. Problem number one is we simply don't have enough information on what to do with the results of these tests. For example, let's say you go out and get a qualitative test and you get a positive result. All that really tells us is that you've had COVID-19. It doesn't quite tell us about your level of immunity because perhaps you had a really mild case and your immune system didn't build up enough antibodies to protect you for the next time. So the solution might be, let's get a quantitative test. Well, that's better, and you're gonna get a numerical value telling us how many antibodies are present. However, we then need to rely on reference ranges. Let me explain reference ranges. If you've ever gotten a test to see if you're immune to measles, you get a numerical value back. And then we look at reference ranges to see if it's above this value, then you know the person's immune. If it falls in between these two numbers, their immunity is falling and they likely need another booster shot. And if it's below this value, they're definitely not immune and they should get a booster ASAP. With COVID-19, whatever number we get, is great, it might be accurate, but we don't have these reference ranges set up like we do with measles, of which we have decades worth of research. COVID-19 is a novel virus. These reference ranges take years to develop, so it's gonna take some time until we know what's what. And the final point of all this is we don't know how long the immunity lasts. Perhaps you do have antibodies, perhaps you are immune, but how long is that immunity gonna last? Is it gonna be one week, one month, one year, or a lifetime? We don't know that information yet, but we will soon. The second problem here is poor quality tests. There's over a hundred of these tests on the market with only four of them being FDA approved through an EUA. That's the emergency use authorization. It essentially allows companies with limited evidence, but still decent evidence, to show that the FDA, their products actually work. Think about the dozens that are out there that are really poor quality, manufactured God knows where, and can be giving questionable results. Problem number three, the false positive rate. Look, no test is perfect. They all have a margin of error. And one of the examples of that is a false positive rate, where it tells you you're positive, but you're actually not. It's flat out wrong. And some of the best tests have a 5% false positive rate. That sounds pretty good, but let's take this example into consideration. Picture yourself in a town of 100 people, and five of those people have had COVID-19 and cleared it. And the government wants to use this antibody test to find out who those five people are. They're gonna give the test to everybody, and they're gonna find out five people have had it. But because it has a 5% false positive rate, five other individuals will also test positive even though they've never had COVID-19. That makes for a total of 10 positive tests, five of which are accurate. 
That means a 50% accuracy. Not so accurate because the prevalence of the disease is quite low. But when the prevalence of the disease goes up, say 50 people have had it in this town, you have 50 people test positive correctly, five people test positive incorrectly, and when you do the math, it's at over 90% accuracy. You see how the prevalence of an illness can affect the accuracy of a test? That false positive rate really needs to be taken into consideration when we use it in areas with a low prevalence of COVID-19. All that goes to show that you as an individual should not run out to get tested for COVID-19 antibodies. We just don't yet know what to do with the information. We can't tell you if you're 100% immune even if you do test positive. The last thing we want you to do is think you have a layer of security when you truly do not. What we can use this information for is on a state, on a government level, to see where COVID-19 is prevalent. How many people have had COVID-19 and not even known it? What's the true fatality rate of this virus? And which areas can we start loosening the social restrictions in to get our economy back? This antibody test is really important, but it's not important to us as individuals. It's important to us as a whole nation. Please, if you have any questions about these antibody tests, leave them down below. I'm gonna be super active in my comments comment section and check out this video where I interviewed 100 doctors or check out this video where I interviewed the man himself, Dr. Fauci.